Today I'm presenting a short, brief piano lesson. How you can master the piano in just a few minutes with just a few minutes of thought and practice. Stick around, it's going to be interesting, and I have a student. Hi, this is Ted Barsalu for Alamo Piano Galleries. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and uh, search for us online at alamopianogalleries.com and go ahead, shop our store and have a look around at everything that we have listed in there. And uh, this is? Uh, my name is Cooper Greenberg <laughs> and I'm here as a guest, my yearly appearance on the piano channel. You might have seen me on our guitar channel, but I'm here to talk to the master himself for my own selfish pursuit of getting better at piano. About a year ago, Cooper had a piano delivered to his house. Is that about, about right? Yep. I think it's more like 10, 11 months, some, almost a year? Yeah, okay. it, was, uh, it was for my wedding. That was, you know, I, I got it around the time I got married and I'm coming up on my one year anniversary there of marriage to my piano. And Congratulations. My yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they're both bringing you happiness and joy in life. I'm learning oh, a lot. I'm learning I'm a learning lot. A lot. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you, how has life been with a different kind of music instrument in the house for you? It's got strings. It, it does have strings, and I will tell you, we've talked about this, but with my guitar, it's, it's like, if it's out, that's what we always tell people in the store. If you got it out, you're going to play it more. The piano is right in my living room. It's the first thing I see when I walk out there in the morning. It draws me to it. I think that's a, an interesting and important thing to know is if you're getting into piano, and you have the space for it in your house, whether it's a 61 key keyboard, a grand, whatever, put it in your line of sight every day because it's going to draw you to it. So that's been the biggest help is it's there. Obviously, I'm going to go. Ease of access. Yeah, just go it's mess like around. It's like hanging your so guitars on a wall. I try, to, I try to do something on the piano every day. Super. You know, and it, it's been helpful because, uh, you know, if you got a keyboard but it's tucked away in a closet, you're rarely going to go get it. You know? We have other video we did. I guess maybe two years ago, I don't want to guess how long ago it was, where yeah. we just kind of jammed on those two keyboards. Yeah. And when the piano was going to your house, I remember I said, hey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to refer you to the best five-minute piano lesson yeah. ever. And I have been referring people to that ever since. You were my first, yeah. you were my first guy who said, hey, man, go check this out. And um, what I'm talking about is a video where Paul McCartney explains to the producer, uh, Rick Rubin, how to play the piano and how he learned the piano. And yeah. it's, I think it's about a five minute video. And there's a whole wealth of information in there and just basic how to play piano, even if you don't know how. Matter of fact, most of the lesson is how you can just go about making up songs, following songs, learning songs based on what Paul McCartney shows you. And I think there's probably no better musician in the world to just yeah. keep it real simple. And it's so super casual. Yeah. And I get you get the feeling that if you went to his house and said, hey, can you give me that five? Oh, sure, mate. Come on over here. And it's not going to get any more formal or fancy than what he does in the video, which yeah. is absolutely perfect because people do remember what he says. Yeah. And so the lesson I have for you, I know you've gone through and looked at the McCartney thing. You could watch it every day and get new things out of it. Yeah. Um, the lesson I have today is how are you doing on memorizing all of your major chords? The ones within the C major scale are easy, mm -hmm. you know. When it gets to the, you know, because that it's just you keep the same shape and you go up right. C major and then, you know, F major, G major, G major, and then you got a couple minors in there with just the white keys. I think since I'm coming from guitar, I'm, and I started that way earlier, you know, I, I had more time to just kind of experiment and learn stuff. I find my biggest hindrance with piano is if I'm trying to write something or I'm messing around with a chord progression. I stick to the chords that are easiest for me, right. and it's usually always in C, F, or G. Um, you know, because those it seems like a one, four, five. Even off of those, you know, there's stuff that's easier that I I find myself getting into a rut with, or just maybe plateauing. Right. Um, yeah. The one thing that um, led me to that conversation we had C, F, and G is when I first. I think I was in fourth or fifth grade, I was seven or eight years old, and I had a piano teacher show me how to play the C scale, the mm -hmm. C major scale, chorded. Mm -hmm. So it was C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, C. You have that yeah. diminished chord on the top, which is just like a dominant seventh, so it resolves. Yeah. 
every single scale sounds the same way. Yeah. In different frequencies, but it's the same structure, you know, major, 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 yeah. half step, major, major step. So the idea behind it is when I first started learning guitar, about the same time I learned that thing, I mean, I've been fooling around with guitar, but I never thought of anything. The first chord you kind of learn on guitar is C, not F, but you learn C, G, A minor, E minor. Some of the simpler yeah. ones are the simpler chords to play on piano. So that's why a lot of the rock and roll songs, they're Just always easy. like in the key of C because almost anyone can sit down and play on the white keys. Yeah. So with that, that's the way that you memorize your major chords, all the white keys, C, F, and G. And notice that C, F, and G is the, you know, the three chords that you find in an accordion. Okay, so yeah. you'll have a row of C, a row of F and G, like the harmonicas. And so those work in song clusters. Yeah. So like you can actually put a song together like that. So the problem is, how do you go about memorizing the other ones? Yeah. And it's real easy. There's reverse Oreo, which is white, black, white. And these are in root position. They're not in any kind of inversion, first, second, third inversion. Uh, to get an inversion, you just move one note up and keep going all the way up the keyboard or move one down. Um, white, black, white. And that's in the chord cluster of D, E, and A. And that's how you play them on the piano. Yeah. Then there's the one that's easiest to remember, which is Oreo, which is black, white, black. And that's the flats of the ones that are white, black, white. Yeah. When you go flat, you get black, white, black. So you get D flat, E flat, and A flat. Yeah. That right there's nine chords. There's only three left. And the way you remember the other three is the hardest. Because all those other chord clusters, all white, white, black, white, and black, white, black, are easy to remember based on how they're formed. The last group, those chords have nothing in common. Yeah. There's all black, black, white, white, and white, black, black. And that's F sharp or G flat, um, B flat, and B. Yeah. And those are all the major chords. It's just based it's, on color. Yeah. And Here's the thing, I had mentioned this, how can you, what's the right age to learn? I was thrilled. When I learned this, I was seven or eight years old. Yeah. I thought, they just told me that before I could be making, I went home the, the first two weeks, I didn't even practice my lessons. Yeah. I was just thrilled going through all the music books. And then I realized, hey, look, C, I'm gonna play C, now I could just read the right hand and start yeah. get my own left hand in my own parts. And the teacher said, just don't block the chord, you know, bust it up, do arpeggio. So that's how you kind of learn to improvise yeah. and, and to get around. So I was so thrilled with that that I actually got my guitar and realized, hey, this is how, this is a real A minor. And I started going note by note. Yeah. And, on, and so I realized I could play, you can play melodies on guitar. That I, yeah. never occurred to me. I always thought it was a chord instrument. Yeah. I think once, once somebody, especially who's a beginner who maybe never took a theory class or was never in band or orchestra or choir or something, realizes that you can just build a chord out of three notes, mm -hmm. you know, a major chord, and you're always going to have your root note, your third and your fifth, and then start trying to visualize that because it's easy with the all white, you know. It is. Because you just skip one, skip a white key, and you got one, three, five. Every other one makes yeah. a beautiful pattern for your hands. But one I think, in I mean, that's the thing is you get so, if you're only playing white keys, like I did for years and years, just when I was in school in a practice room and trying to mess around with piano, it's so intimidating to think like, oh, I got to mix black and white keys, but the theory is the same there. You know, mm -hmm. you're just getting your root note and then your third, major third and your fifth, okay. you know. I don't know if you know this. Irving Berlin. Mm -hmm. but see, some people refer to the greatest American songwriter. Wrote songs in every single key. Had a transposing piano. Really? Pick up the action and move it. Now he's in E flat, but he plays that all white keys. Really? Oh, yeah. He had a transposing piano. So he could sing in different keys, and I have to learn them. Someone would come over, hey, Irv, great song. Like Bing Crosby, can you lower it a third? Sure. <laughs> he plays the same thing he knows, and it comes out. You know, it, come, it comes out. So wow. it's kind of interesting to think about how every digital piano is, so, is a transposer at the same time. Yeah. People take that for granted. Yeah. When you start getting into playing in other keys, it's like, Hey, Cooper, you know how to play in all white keys, right? Yeah, okay. Can you go like plus two on there and just play what you know? And then you're like, hey, man, I'm playing Sweet Home Alabama and it's got black keys in it or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's different. Uh, so that to me is pretty exciting. The other thing is what age is a good age? And I had, um, I had this thought if I had a bunch of, you know, white cookies and black cookies and then you had marshmallows and dark chocolate, you could put these cookies together and say, look, this is an Oreo. 
Yeah. And so this is D flat, E flat, and A flat. This is a reverse Oreo. It's got white, chocolate, and white. Yeah. All right. So this is, you know, this is D, E, and A. Yeah. This is all white. It's a white cookie with white cream in the middle. This one's all black. And then this one's black cookie, white cream, white cream. Yeah. White cookie, black cream, black cream. And you can teach kindergartners this to sit down and play those chords. If they could reach even on a smaller keyboard, yeah. they would know those chords without even knowing the names and be able to play. Before too long, they realize the ones that have a lot of black keys, when you play the scale, the C scale, up and down, you have to add a black key. And they'll yeah. figure it out based on whether it's major or minor. Yeah. Because most people can tell the difference between major or minor and minor or major. Yeah. And that's where we're going to kind of end this conversation on yeah. piano because we're going to go home. We're going to practice this stuff. Yeah. I want you to start doing arpeggios because I hear you playing it. Start doing arpeggios. Next time we're going to sit down and we're going to play. Yeah. And we're going to do the exact same piano lesson. You're going to come in with the, Rick, with the Paul McCartney, Rick Rubin thing. Like my teacher, you would tell me, your next lesson is to memorize this. Yeah. So everything in there you know how to do, and you can explain and show someone else, so you don't need to refer them to the McCartney yeah. video. But I just think it's great because who would want new, a lesson from McCartney? We're right? the new McCartney. We're the, okay. All right. So, but we're going to do all the minor chords. Yeah. And it's the same way. It's the same so structure. I would say if you're on YouTube for piano content, we do a lot of product videos, you know, you're always talking about in-depth specs on pianos mm -hmm. and, and different types. There's a lot of people that go to YouTube for learning material, but it, it's almost like the equivalent of reading tabs for guitar. I mean, it, it'll it show is. you, but it's so much more important to kind of understand, you know, what you're, you know, having somebody tell you this is how you build a chord and this is how you can memorize. So you don't have to just memorize a song based on numbers on a chart. So I think visual aids, are helpful. We'll get so we'll bring know, some cookies. Yeah, we'll have some cookies. <laughs> but I think you know, you and I can develop kind of a, a visual guide. Sure. Because what's more, it's more important to hear somebody like you talk about. Here's how you visualize this thing, so you can actually create your own stuff and well, not just memorize a song. Conceptually, you know? a lot of times listening to some to, to to some musicians or people talk just about music or music theory or the concept of how to simplify something so that really complex things are easily understood and you can sit there and yeah. it doesn't matter if you can sit down and take the theory you can sit on a midi keyboard print it out and then go through and analyze it later yeah. meanwhile right now you're inspired so just play and then look at it or yeah. take it from there but my thought was when you mentioned a chart is we'll take just like you know the the stamp graph where it shows mm -hmm. like the the guitar fret and you draw yeah. on your finger we'll do that with the piano right underneath it yeah for all the round for all the rounds c f and g you know d e a that go together yeah and then for the whole scales so that yeah. you can see like this is how you do it on piano and guitar thing and that a lot of people yeah play ukulele they play guitar and almost everyone tries to play piano because you just push the keys yeah you know, it's like bowling you just knock down the pins yeah, and then it's even better because you can just take that shape and move it any octave right. and you got, you know. Once you learn that form on that keyboard, now some pianos and keyboards are different. I'm, yeah. So we're like, oh man, this one I got to stretch. This one's a little smaller. So you adjust, but conceptually you understand to play that on any piano yeah. that, that you come across. Well, I'm, I'm excited because Super. I need to get out of my box. It's like guitar player only playing pentatonic scale. I right. got to get some some fresh material in there to Super. keep me inspired. So it helps having the piano there. It helps having somebody that can teach me how to play it. Uh, but if you're watching the video, obviously we're going to, we're talking about major chords. We're going to talk about minor chords. I think it'd be great if we could talk about sevenths and inversions down the road, you know, how to Absolutely. get some extra flavor. But if there's content that you are trying to kind of learn and conceptualize and you're not getting the info, let us know in the comments because if anybody knows how to do it, it would be Ted. And I, I would like to guitar. I would like to learn as well. So let us know what you want to see because there's always gonna be new pianos to review and talk about here. Mm -hmm. But you know, really it's about learning how to play them and that and, and I also know. like to discuss things that get people excited about playing. It's like, hey, you know what? I wanna go home and think about that and play. Yeah. And if you do that for someone. Then the video's worth it. The time you spent with them in the store, tell them, hey, just go home and try this. And they get excited. Yeah. And so I guess that's what it's all about, is get people motivated to play. And one day we'll do a tutorial on how to play the Popeye's jingle. That would be great. That's, that's the that's one thing I can provide to this channel. All super. Right. 
I'm Ted Barsalu for Alamo Piano Galleries. This is Cooper Greenberg for Alamo Piano Galleries, yep. sitting down formally for all stores video. First time, the other one was just for the store. Yeah, we got nine stores, and you can visit us all over the country, but if you want the real deal, call Ted, because he takes a call from anywhere around the world and give you the info. That's an idea for a video. Let's talk about some of the phone calls I've received from <laughs> seven, and then you can get you and Chris can come in because this is, that's another video. That's Thank a, you yeah. again for your time. We'll be looking for you. I'm glad we left on a positive note because that would be a crazy video. This is Ted and Cooper with Alamo Piano Galleries. We'll see you again soon.